Okay, calling the uh, Arlington Finance Committee meeting to order. Uh, what we have to do tonight, <coughs> we have to re-vote four articles. Nothing spectacular, but just to blend everything in together. I gave you, uh, I handed out the Appendix C, the override and non-override sheet. Uh, so you can see sort of how everything blends together. I'll let Alan discuss that. Um, the four articles we're doing are collective bargaining, water bodies, overlay, and uh, the fiscal stabilization fund, the override stabilization fund. So why don't we start off with collective bargaining. Now, a um, little bit of uh, miscommunication, but there's two unions still out. So last year, uh, we approved all the other unions. They got built into the budgets. And the two unions that are still out, of course, their money couldn't be put in the budgets. So even though we have this year's money from a Warren article that's still there, that goes and continues on. And then we have to add another amount for next year. So. Um, the manager is recommending that the sum of 337624 is hereby appropriated be set aside for future collective bargaining agreements, said sum to be raised by general taxes, and said sum shall not be expended without a, without a future vote of town meeting. So, um, and, and we'll have to do this as long as we don't settle with the two unions, then we have to set aside the money to keep going there. So, are there any questions on collective bargaining? So that John? 337624. 337624. And that's what's shown here under Warrant 56, collective bargaining. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Right. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded uh, to approve the collective bargaining for 337624. Any discussion or questions? Uh, any? Which unions? The two uh, uh, police and ranking uh, uh, ranking officers and patrolmen. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Favorable action. Unanimous. Water bodies. For years and years and years, I've been telling people, don't put the amount of money that you want in the Warren article. And uh, it still keeps popping up. So this is Article 67 on water bodies. And if you remember, the warrant has 50,000. We approved 60,000. Wanted to see if it would flow. It didn't. <laughs> uh, the moderator has declared that 60,000 is, is beyond the scope of the article. In other words, you warn the voters that you are going to appropriate 50,000. Um, you can't then go and appropriate like another 20%, which this would be. And even though this is small money, you know, if you had an appropriation for 5 million, oh, wait a minute, let's throw another 20%. Now you're talking real money. So, <coughs> and I talked to the Conservation Commission who submitted it, and they put it in a sum of. They didn't put in the amount. Somehow in the selectman's office, somebody put in the 50000 I don't know why. Now, I already told uh, uh, David White, uh, I think he's chair of the Conservation Commission, about it. It's really not a problem. Because if you remember from the water bodies sheet, there's like eighty or ninety thousand dollars in reserves that keep get you know that gets rolled over. So what I said is, this is what happened. There's nothing we can do. Uh, oops. I thought I had changed that. I didn't. Um, but we'll you know come back next year and we'll see if we can make you whole or we'll see what we can do about it. So I, th I think they'll be fine. Uh, 
Dean. I move that we reduce the water bodies appropriation from sixty to fifty thousand dollars. Second. Okay. Is there any questions or any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of fifty thousand dollars for water bodies, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Unanimous. Alan, uh, make a note to check it when I send it to you because I, I didn't change it. Well, I, I, I told you that. You said you did. I thought I did. <laughs> I guess I didn't. I have a circle. Okay, Article 72. <laughs> okay, Article 72 is the overlay. Well, apparently about three days ago, the, the overlay account has been building up uh, overlay surplus account has been built up to a uh, larger amount and so the uh, the manager finally browbeat the assessors mm -hmm. into not only declaring 200,000 available but declaring two and a half million available or 2.7 million available so what we're recommending to you is voted a and this is what we've already voted that the sum of 200,000 be in hereby is appropriated to be transferred from the overlay reserve surplus account of previous years said sum to be utilized in the termination of the tax rate. So that doesn't change, except I put an A in front of it. B, that the sum of two and a half million be in hereby is appropriated to be transferred from overlay reserve surplus accounts of previous years into the fiscal stability stabilization fund and expended under the direction of future town meetings. So. The two and a half million comes out of overlay into the overlay stabilization fund. You say override or fiscal stabilization? You say override or fiscal? I'm oh, sorry. Override. Overlay. Override. Well, no, it, override or override. fiscal? It's the fiscal stability stabilization fund. Sometimes it's called the uh, uh, override account. But yeah, that's the override. Uh, the override. It's uh, technically the fiscal stability stabilization fund. Got it. So that'll just go in there and stay until at some point in the future it's needed. Uh, I went back and forth. There's a couple of different ways we can do it, but this keeps this clean. So it, it's not, it doesn't impact the override. It, it doesn't get involved with it. It's just pretty straightforward. Uh, are there any questions on it? Yes, Annie. So um, are we sure we can drain that whole account? Oh, it's not drained. It's not drained. There's a lot still left. Any idea how much is still left? Uh, probably another couple million. So the next year, the assessors will take a look at all their, uh, and hopefully release more. Yeah, so we're not draining the account. Okay, but they're gonna do some math about this to figure out what they actually need as a reserve and not squirrel it away like that in the future, or? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't anticipate that they had that kind of money left, um, but, you know, we get in two and a half million, we can put that aside, um, and next year we'll go after as much more than we can. Just not a good look. Okay, so any other questions? Charlie. So, <clears throat> what does that do to our uh, forecast of the override stabilization fund balance? Um, okay. And the you know, shortfall schedule? So right now, with this, uh, no, I see over right. Well, one way to look at it is it basically covers this year's deficit. Instead of the two million four seventy five four ninety from the stabilization fund, it's like break even and use it. Yeah. So right, right now, it's, we, it's pushing those years out. Yeah. 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 Right now, without an override, uh, we don't have a deficit in twenty twenty one or twenty two given current circumstances and forecasts. Uh, with an override, we don't have a deficit in 23, so it stretches out another year. Uh, again, if everything plays out the way it's forecast. Um, but they also reduce the override from 5.6 to 5.5 million. Um, what, what does the deficit look like in each of those two years when you come to the has this been run with the uh, with the override 
with, 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 with the overlay surplus being transferred? Um, with the override, the deficit in 24 is about 17.8 million. And without the override, the deficit in 23 is 14.7 million. Okay, so um, you know we've been taking money out of the overlay surplus year after year. Uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say I was surprised that it was that much there. So, uh, anyway, is there any other questions, Sean? Yeah, one more time, how much is after this two point two and a half million dollar transfer? How much is left in there? Left in the I believe there's about two million left. Yeah. Oh. Could yes. You, could you say again? The, it's going to extend the uh, um, <coughs> time to when you know for like one year. With, with, uh, the override. Without, without it, no override this year. I'm sorry. If there's no override this year. If there's no override this year, we have no deficit. Ah. Uh, until 23. Extend it until 23. Right. I mean, this doesn't extend it. It, it uh, you know, by itself. There's other aspects to it. But any? Okay. So I'm looking at the long range plan from February 6th, and I believe this is long range plan without the override. Yeah. And it says that yeah, the bottom line in 2023 will be a negative. 14 million, a little less than $14 million. Yep. If we add $2.5 million to the stabilization fund, then in theory, that deficit in 2023 would be considerably smaller, like $2.5 million smaller. Okay, but since then, you know, we've added another $450,000 to the school, okay. which gets built in over right. uh, over those years. And, uh, you know, so that, that spreads it out. Okay, so a new calculation of the five-year plan that we don't have in front of us. No, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I should have, um, I was at the budget and revenue when we had that, yeah. uh, but and I didn't, I didn't bring copies. The increase in the growth factor and the two and a half million, and we still end up in the same place in 2023. We just don't end up worse, which we would have done with the 50% factor. Right. With an override. Okay. Okay, any other questions on the two and a half million? Okay, motion's been made and seconded to add uh, transfer two and a half million to the uh, Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous. Okay, and the final one is Article 77. Now, um, let me go through this. There's usually this is where, under more circumstances, we either take money, we either put money into the override stable, the fiscal stability stabilization fund, or we take money out. Without the override, we should be we we should vote under A that the sum of two million four seventy five four ninety be in here by two million. 475-490 be in hereby appropriated from the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund and that the Board of Assessors is instructed to set uh, to use set amount in the determination of the tax rate. So normal circumstances that money comes out. However, there's, a, there's an override going to be on the ballot. So we have a B provided. Provided, however, if the Proposition 2.5 override scheduled for June 11th, 2019 for 5.5 .5 million passes, then the vote under A above is nullified and the sum of 2,174,510 B and hereby is appropriated into the Fiscal Stability Fund, uh, said sum to be raised by general taxes and expended under the direction of future town meetings. So basically you take the 5.5 million now there's 850,000 in the budgets, um, and uh, under school, uh, 
DPW, DPW Council on Transportation. And tra school transportation. Oh, no, yep. Council on Aging and Transportation. So there's 850,000 there. Uh, now they'll have to be, a, when we get to the budgets at town meeting, we, uh, Alan has put those amounts in the three. So there's the regular budget without the override, and then underneath, let me just read this to you. So, yeah. Underneath it says, provided, however, if the Proposition 2.5 override schedule for June 11th for $5.5 million passes, then the amount appropriated for the educational budget will be increased by 600000 to a total of $71,427,138. And basically, that's the same thing under Public Works for 200000 and the same under Council on Aging Transportation for 50000 So you take the $5.5 million, you subtract the 850000 that's being used, then you have to subtract the 2,475,490, right? Because that's the deficit that we have this year without the override. And you come up with the 2,174,510 under B. So take the 5.5 million, 850,000 gets spent. It eliminates the 2.475 deficit. And we put into the override stabilization 2.174. So th that's, that's the basic framework if it passes. So uh, we've got the contingent votes in four places. So at the end of town meeting, uh, the town meeting will pass, will do, take two votes. One, the regular budget, and the second, the contingent votes, which will be that 850,000. And then when they get to Article 77, they'll have voting A and B. Uh, which will, so this way we don't have to go back to town meeting, you know, after the, uh, after the override. So I'm recommending again, under 77, voted A, the sum of 2,475,490 2, <coughs> be appropriated from the fiscal stability stabilization to be used in the, created the tax rate. B, provided however, if the override passes, then A above is nullified, that first paragraph, and the sum of 2,174,510 is appropriated into the fiscal stability fund. So, is there any questions on that? Charlie. Yes. <coughs> so, um, respectfully, Mr. Chairman, I, I object to that formulation. There is the implied assumption here that uh, if the override passes, the funds are going to be used to increase the spending by the school department and the public works department. And that is the subject that we were discussing at the last meeting, where we have a deficit. Instead of trying to cover the deficit, we're, we're going back to the taxpayers, spending more money, and increasing the structural deficit. And, and you're not giving the opportunity to have a position that does not increase the structural deficit? Well, I think if the town meeting votes a negative on the, th on the contingent budgets, the 850,000, then the easiest way to deal with this is to take the 2,174,510 and increase that by 850,000. So why don't we put that in the in the vote? In other words, we, we we're, we're we're sort of forcing the issue to come out in a certain way, which is to spend more money. Which to me, I, you know, I think when we're facing the, we're in, in you know, in one one plan we're facing a, we're facing a fourteen million dollar deficit, and then we're going to go get a five and a half million or five million dollar override now. And then the following year have a $17 million deficit. Somewhere there's folly here. You know, in this document that we got in the mail, there's a, there's a statement here that, that sort of blows my mind. Um, it says the town spending does not create a structural deficit. The lack of revenue creates the deficit. That is such hogwash. Spending creates the deficit. And it's, I think, I think uh, Dean mentioned it uh, at the last meeting. 
that that on the town side, the, the, you know, the payroll has been increasing steadily every year. Uh, the school department increases it according, you know, claiming an increase because of the, the growth in students. But somewhere we have to have a little bit of fiscal uh, uh, responsibility. Uh, yeah, sensibility, whatever. Yeah. Discipline. Sorry. Okay. Well. The, and, uh, and that vote, the way you formulate it, is predicating spending more money. Well, it, it's basically balancing the budget. If one situation happens, the budget's balanced. If another situation happens, it's balanced. That's our job, to propose a balanced budget to town meeting. If the, you know, the town meeting is going to decide whether they want to put the three contingent votes in, uh, and they're going to decide uh, whether to... Uh, uh, put the money in the fiscal stability fund. You know, it's it's, uh, uh, and we haven't gotten into our position yet on that, Alan. But but I think we need a way to decouple the override from the from the commitments, uh, the fuller commitments, and, and possibly one way to do that is to simply not vote the commitments, and then if we put this into the fiscal stability into the override stabilization fund, then the remainder go into free cash essentially. It wouldn't be spent. If it's not appropriated, it can't be spent. So it has to go. You go either the stabilization fund or in free cash, but I think you know, I, I do think we need to separate those two. You know, there's the override and there's the commitments made by the selectmen that we built in as an optional budget. So if town meeting voted down this, the B version, the, the two versions <coughs> of the budgets, and then the town voted for the override, that cash would end up in free cash. Is that if I'm correct? Right, and if the um, if the town meeting votes down the three contingent budgets, right. then we could simply add 850,000 so, to this comes later, yes. We right. can add that back in there. But it's, it's not us. I'm confused. Annie? Okay, <coughs> so I think what you're suggesting is that if we vote that if the override does not pass, we're gonna take a certain amount of money out of the fund, and if the override does pass, we're going to put a certain amount of money in the fund, ignoring the eight hundred fifty thousand dollar increase in the budget. In that second case, mm -hmm. that you're hamstringing the the ability of the town, the town manager, and the school committee to spend the money that would normally would that would be in that budget. Like well, I'm very confused by this. It would Why be spent. It's potentially spent later. Except that it's budgeted for 2020. Not if it's not, not if it's not approved. I mean, remember the the, the overrides right. approved by the voters. The budget's approved by town meeting. There, yes. there are two independent votes. The voters are right. not voting on the commitments. Right. So the if voters the voters, voters vote for the override mm -hmm. on the basis of the fact that the, the board of selectmen has made these commitments and they're expecting there to be six hundred thousand dollars more in the school budget, two hundred fifty thousand dollars more in the transportation, <laughs> or whatever, and it's not there, then we fail to meet the commitments that. Like somewhere, there's got to be a vote to appropriate that money. That's what town meeting would do. Right, that's the vote we're taking before the override. Are you suggesting we're going to bring town meeting back into session after the override if it passes and vote that eight hundred fifty thousand dollars? No, I, I think the chair gave the solution. If town meeting does not approve the second, right, you know, the, the eight hundred fifty thousand dollar increase, then we can go back and make a substitute motion on seventy seven to put two one seven four five ten plus eight fifty into the override stabilization fund. That seems pretty clean. Okay. Well, so what is the wording of the vote then going to be? I'm not following. Well, then what, what would be done is when 77 comes up, uh -huh. you could substitute uh, for 2,174,510, that number plus the 850. 40, 47, 50. You're just substituting a number. It's a simple But we would do that. Okay, you're After saying we would do that the if the contingent budget does not pass. Right, right. But if the contingent, okay, got it. All right, that makes sense to me then. Okay, John? So I'm just uh, following up and just trying to think through the ramifications all of, of all this. So if the town meeting votes down the contingent budget, you're suggesting that the vote would then be to if the override passes to put that money into the stabilization fund. And that means that there will not be increased spending, for example, in the school budget for the next fiscal year, even though the voters have voted for an override 
in the next fiscal year with the expectation that that's how the money would be spent. Um, is that appropriate, or is it more appropriate to bring back town meeting to, to vote to yes. approve a budget well, that's approved by the voters based on voters' expectations? Yeah. Well, first of all, just my opinion, I don't think there's a snowball's taken chance that the town meeting is going to turn down those three contingencies. The 250000 is for improving mobility for senior citizens with sidewalks and lighting and, and that whole range. Uh, 600 for the schools, I, I think, will pass. But what we're saying is that if, those, if town meeting turns those down, if town meeting refuses to spend the money, it doesn't matter what the, the people have decided on the, uh, uh, in the override, it's town meeting that appropriates money. So if they turn the contingencies down, the only thing for us to do is add the 850 to the override stabilization fund or fiscal stability fund. That's if it's if it's formulated by having a contingent a vote on a contingent budget in advance of the override. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the 200,000 for the DPW is going to be spent on. We, we analyze the DPW budget we've approved, I hear these nice things, but has there been an analysis of any, have we heard any details, has there been any analysis? I mean, this, this, this is a big chunk of money that is suddenly being, we're being asked to approve, we the finance committee, and I, I'm, I, I'm, I can't wrap my hands around exactly what, what, is, what is anticipated being spent. Uh. It doesn't really give that much detail, uh, but it's, you know, it's for that. It's it's for additional spending, sidewalks, crosswalks, lighting, um, signal lights, things like that. Um, you know, this is the, uh, um, quite often when there's an override, the school's looking for more money, the town wants something. The last time we did an override, they, they got 500000 or something like that uh, for improved street work. Um, so uh, this is what the selectmen want to want to spend it on, and uh, uh, you know, it's good. the override is going on the ballot, and it's going to be for five and a half million. Um, I thought it was five. Uh, five, five and, and a half. half. Went from five six to, to oh, five, five six to five five. five. All right. And uh, five six five point six to five point five, uh, and so. There's the 200,000 public works and 50,000 contingent votes. So like I said, there'll be two votes. Uh, so can I ask a historical question? Sure. In the previous override, when we voted, uh, when we voted that override, one of the commitments was that $400,000 a year for street work, which I remember because I was on the board at the time. Did you guys get details on that here that you voted <coughs> on at the time? Or was it just the lump sum number to be spent on the street work? Well, I recall this an additional 400000 on top of what was already in the budget for <coughs> specific street paving. Right. So that I, 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 get my, I can get my hands around that. That they, they, had, they had this much, DPW had this much money to do this much. And right. the override gave them this much money to do this much. Right. I'm hearing curbing and curb cuts, and that's something that we do. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I'm just, I just don't know, you know, where is this? When is it? What, what, and I'm asking how is that different than the initial four? So we're, in, we're in slightly uncharted territory because mm -hmm. this is, I went back and I looked. So in 2005 and 2011, mm -hmm. we adjourned town meeting and brought them back on the Monday after the vote. Right. This is the first time we're saying the town meeting doesn't care enough to show up. That's the difference. Uh, so right. before I mean, we weren't asked to I'm vote asking. for it. We weren't asked to vote ahead of time for it. I'm asking whether or not the finance committee had details on the $400,000, okay. not town meeting. No. It's a little okay. different. So again, when, I don't see how it's different. When we did it back in 11, we had a whole two budgets. Yes. You know, we had a whole yeah. two yeah. thing. Um, and, and, you know, basically a whole different set of budgets. Uh, it was much more complex. Here, you're talking three, 600, 250, in three different line items. Uh, so made the decision not to go through, you know, 
14 pages uh, for two budgets uh, when we could just put one thing at the bottom of each. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, there's, there's four places the money you're going. There's dealing with the schools, DPW, Council on Aging Transportation, and the overrides, uh, the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. Okay, Charlie? Yeah. <coughs> Andy, to answer your question about the $400,000, yeah. the DPW department has a 10-year plan right. on streets yeah. and highways, yeah. and it's, the time period is, is really measured in money. Mm -hmm. So whatever, they have streets that are listed in order priority. So if they have $200,000, they get to do so many streets. If they get $400,000, they do so many more streets. That's the, that's the genesis of that. Right. Do they have an ADA compliance plan? Because if you're talking about curb cuts, you're talking about ADA compliance. And I'm sure they know, do because we spend money yeah. every year on ADA compliance. And so it sounds to me like some of this $250,000 is being used to accelerate ADA compliance. Sounds like Well, I think candidly the $250,000 is a stop to try to buy senior boats. We know what it is. Now, if the on the, on the Article 77, um, A is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. No override, money has to come out. B, if the override succeeds, money can, doesn't have to come out, now money can goes back in. Now, if the committee wants to um, add to that uh, a proviso, I won't put it in the in minutes that, I won't necessarily put it there, but if the three contention votes fail, um, then 850000 will be added into the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. And if they fail, I'll get up, make a motion to do exactly that, if that's okay. what the committee wants to do. Uh, Jonathan and then Alan. My only concern is, and I know you've said, based on your vast experience, that it's unlikely that those contingent budgets would be voted down. But if they were, <coughs> that would basically I think that would undercut the effort to pass the override because who the hell is going to vote for an override when the money is just going to go into it, the fiscal stability stabilization fund? Um, You're right. I, I mean, I just. It, but there's nothing we can, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, the three contingent votes, they're there in Allen's budget, so uh, that's up to town meeting to uh, to do, and then it's up to the people whether they want to do the override. So there's there's two layers there. Okay, uh, Charlie. I move the amendment that you just suggested. Okay. Second. Second. His amendment would basically say if the three contingent votes do not pass or any one of the combination of the three, then the excess money will go into the Fiscal Stability Stabilization Fund. Second. Okay. Um, all Okay, does everybody understand what that means? So that be added, that would be added to the language. Be added, uh, you know, I'll I'll simply take out the one number and put in another number. It's eight hundred and fifty thousand higher, or six hundred or two fifty or whichever doesn't pass. Um, is there any questions on that? Okay, uh, all those in favor of uh, adding Charlie's amendment of eight fifty or some such number if the contingent votes don't pass, please say aye. 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 Okay. Against? No. No. Okay. So. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Opposed? Okay. Okay. So that motion carries. Count. 14 to 1. Okay, with that, now we go back to the whole of Article 77. A, I'm sorry, Alan? I want to address Christine's question. As, as we were trying to figure out how to fit these numbers in, into the budgets without having two entirely separate budgets, spending a lot of paper, um, I, I did sort of continually ask, well, where should that $200,000 go? Are the highways, engineering, or whatever, and, and the answer we came up with was, well, since there's a line in the, in the DPW budget said that funds can be moved around within the DPW budget, we just added it to the bottom line. So there was specifically no 
no particular commitment to meet the requirements of the commitment. And similarly, in the Council on Aging Transportation, where do we put the $50,000? Would it go into expenses to maybe buy a new van or into staffing to maybe hire a van driver for longer? And there's really no decision available on that, so we put it into expenses. So it's sort of locked into buying something rather than you know, uh, paying the van driver for more hours. Uh, so I'm just saying there, there wasn't a lot of planning gone into how we meet, how we take that amount of money, the 250000 and meet the commitments that the board, is, the select board is probably voting on right now. 600000 of schools, that's a black hole. We, you know, we don't know where that goes. It just pours in and something happens to them. Well, she yeah, did. They gave us a detailed plan no, they, for how they're spending that money. Yeah, okay. And they have a detailed plan. Yeah. Still, yeah. Still a black hole. Still <laughs> not a black hole. Okay, so um, I mean, it's 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 a policy issue that, that the selectmen are strong on. Um, you, you walk through Arlington Center, and there are plenty of places, curb cuts, bricks are in terrible condition, uh, uh, that that the money could be spent on. So I'm, I I believe that's the area they're trying to they're trying to go after. Okay, so um, now let's vote on the entire 77, including a the four million, or sorry, the two million four seventy five in to pay for no override, B, to put money into the stabilization fund if the override passes, which contains an amendment that I will uh, add of 850,000 or a combination if any of the contingent votes do not pass. And I will, I will get up to add that number into that. Any questions? I don't have a question, I just have a general comment. Okay. Uh, in general, I don't want to say the word, but it's really, this account is really a plug for to balance the budget, correct? At the end of the day, it's, I, 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 I That's our job. And like, I'd also like to give you the authority to whatever changes there are to make it right there on the town meeting floor to balance the budget best, the best of your capability. Yeah, As, they, aside from all these yeah. numbers. Well, these. Alan and I and Sandy have been spending, seems like weeks. A lot of time. A lot of time. Uh, you know, getting this and every the last three days. That's yeah. right. We spent an hour on a dollar on the cannabis mitigation fund, uh, just trying to figure out how to balance that. It's amazing what can do things. So, yes, that will be done. Thank you. Okay. I any other? We just voted. I think it was true. Yeah, I, I understand, so, but it, that's why I was moving all over the place. But I yeah. just wanted to make it, it put it all in English. And there are really only four four numbers. Right. That are, so there's only sixteen different combinations. I think. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in Didn't favor of seventy-seven. I'm sorry. Did we just vote that? We voted for amendment. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor of seventy-seven with A, B, um, and uh, the amendment if the contingencies don't pass. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. I'm going to go on the basis that it's 14 to 1. Uh, since, uh, all those in favor of the, uh, the whole Article 77, please raise your hand. Okay, 14 to 1. Okay, so that's done. I was just trying to figure out where in the article to put this, but. Okay, now the big issue. Um, the selectmen, in my opinion, will probably be voting. Uh, they, they, I think they took some preliminary votes, but they're voting now on the formal vote they had to wait to a certain time because it has to be like f within 45 days of, of putting the ballot question on or something like that. Um, to do that, it will be for five and a half million. Um, the selectmen have requested our, uh, um, that we support the override. So that is the question we talked about a great deal uh, a couple weeks ago and uh, I put before you today. Um, does the Finance Committee wish to support the override, all four pieces, the three budget contingencies and the money into the 
uh, Fiscal sta Stability Stabilization Fund. Um, and what is the wish of the committee? What, what do you know about the uh, straw votes, anything? In my opinion, it will probably be a 5-0 vote for uh, putting the debt, ex for putting the override on the ballot um, of 5.5 million. If something different happens, we're expecting a text. We're expecting a text, but I, I don't anticipate anything different will happen. That's Tom, uh, John. That's at the select board. I'm sorry. Is that the vote of the select board. What yes. That was that's uh, you know ballot uh, put a ballot question on the ballot uh, is entirely the approval of the selectmen. So, discussion, Charlie. <clears throat> so, um, at the risk of repeating myself, um, this is a a program that the, the program that I understand the selectmen are supporting, which they may not have yet formally supported, is to increase the structural deficit. Now, in, at, at the Long Range Planning Committee meeting on many occasions, Dan Dunn, who was the chairman of the Board of Selectmen at the time, argued in favor of a, um, a, a, a an override at this time because if we waited the sticker shock was going to be so big that people wouldn't wouldn't know what to do they'd be besides themselves and the sticker shock was if there was no override 14 million dollars at a time in the future I think <coughs> it was 2023 it's been bouncing around now that they, we have this additional 2.5 million. So the proposal that the Board of Selectmen has come back with is to have an override, spend more money by a substantial amount, and give us a, a deficit a year later of $17 million. To me, this is madness. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, I, there's not, not a reason that, that I can see to justify it. If, if you really believe that $14 million is such a big number. So, you know, my, my recommendation is that, that the committee should not support the override proposal by the Board of Selectmen. Peter. In addition to that, I'm concerned that uh, putting the override vote on the ballot uh, will, risk, will risk the Arlington High School rebuild program, which in my mind is far more urgent and important. Okay. Um, Annie. I'm going to speak specifically to Peter's concern. You know, it's a menu override. The last menu override that we did, some people voted for Minuteman, more people voted for Thompson or Gibbs or whatever was on, and more people voted for the high school um, implement the planning implementation money. So when it's a menu override, people can vote for one and not the other. And I don't think that asking two questions risks both questions. I think it actually has the opposite effect, that it's when we do an override with no options <coughs> that you risk the whole thing. It's, it's one thing or the other. So, you know, if it, if it were me, I would be arguing that those those items, more money for the schools and more money for mobility for seniors and so on and so forth, would be also line items on the ballot. Obviously, we don't get to decide that. That would be my argument. So I don't think the high school would be injured by an operating override at this point at all. I think it's been a long time since we had an operating override, and there's a lot of people who moved to town, and they don't really understand the implications up or down. And this is, if nothing else, going to educate them about the nature of the question. Okay, John Ellis. Yeah, a couple of comments. John uh, shouldn't sit next to each other. It gets confusing. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I think it, it, it is, is important to come back to the point that um, so representations were made at the last meeting that maybe the best strategy would be to wait. And if we just waited a few years till we actually had, had spent all of the reserve fund, then we'd be in a better position and we wouldn't risk the high school. To me, that's that's misleading and a misrepresentation on a number of counts. The, the first account, is, as the town manager and Jan Dunn pointed out, is that if you wait three years, you're not asking the voters for $340 million. 
unit or three hundred forty dollars per household, as we're asking now, they'll be asking for about nine hundred dollars per household, which would be sticker shock to the voters. The second thing is more of a political thing, which is right now there are uh, people mobilized to pass both the override and the high school budget. There are twenty one precincts, and we have forty precinct captains, two in each precinct. <coughs> The people working on this are putting in hundreds of hours of time. They've already identified several thousand voters, probably 20, 30 percent of the voters that we need. All of that labor and effort that are required to pass these things don't just materialize. If you're suggesting that it's the best plan to delay, you need to find those thousands of hours of volunteer time to get that thing passed. And that's what's, you know, that's why waiting doesn't doesn't really work out. And the third thing that I want to bring up is that, you know, we talk about it as expensive. It's expensive. Expense doesn't mean anything until you <coughs> compare it to something else. Expensive compared to what? You know? And we heard the school committee present what they thought the needs for the school were. And the most interesting thing about that presentation to me wasn't what they asked for, it was what they didn't ask for. They didn't ask for what the schools wanted was additional social workers in the elementary schools. Because right now, 500 kid elementary school has one social worker. Okay. So what does that mean for the education of the kids in town? What it means is when a kid is flipping out, when a kid is having some emotional problems, and he's knocking over tables and slamming chairs, that there is one social worker in the school to deal with that. And if two kids are doing it at the same time, it's the teacher dealing with it. And if we're trying to educate all the kids in Arlington, I can tell you those kids are going to remember the sound of that table slamming on the floor a lot more than they're going to remember the math lesson. And the schools were not asking for additional social workers because the money wasn't there. And it's not just the problem kids who are taking away from the learning of the other students. Imagine a child, second or third grader, who's just lost their grandparent or parent, or the parents are going through a divorce and they're beside themselves. They can't concentrate, they're in tears in the corner. Who is dealing with that in the schools? The answer is no one, okay? The teacher is saying, keep your chin up, kid, do your math homework. There isn't the support for that. So to say that this is too high spending, overly generous, I think it means, I think we have to think about compared to what? And to me, I'm not questioning the school committee's spending decisions, but I am suggesting that this is a, a minimum to provide the students with what they need, and I think the kids deserve it, and I think that Arlington taxpayers are going to support it, and the Finance Committee should stand behind this budget. Okay, John. Jonathan. Uh, putting aside these arguments about the merits, um, I'd like to ask you, Al, for a little clarification on what precisely we're voting on here. Because I hear arguments <coughs> about, well, you know, there's concerns about it being on the ballot at the same time as the high school debt exclusion um, and the impacts that might have. And that seems to me to be uh, a non-issue at this point because it's going to be on the ballot per assuming the, the selectmen vote the way, or the select board votes the way we think they're going to vote. Um, so perhaps to make this a more productive and efficient discussion, we could have a little bit more clarification as to what we're being asked to vote on here so <coughs> that we can focus our arguments a little bit. It, basically, we're talking the override. We're not talking the budgets. We're not talking I, I this or that. We're just talking um, ever since 2005 when the first successful um, override took place, um, the it, w it was a... a um, it was a formation of all the different major bodies in the town. So, uh, and actually, if you remember at the time, it was pushed by the Board of Selectmen, led by Charlie Lyons. Um, and uh, the Selectmen said, you know, this is what we're gonna do. This is our, this is the plan. Put it more, uh, raising the exemptions for elderly, did this, did that. This is the spending of the money. This is the money that's set aside. We're not gonna have another override for five years. Um, he, he never quite got to finish that because somebody 
beat him out for a political office, but. Uh, <laughs> it's my fault it rained. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the same, basically the same thing happened uh, in 2011 with the last override. Um, and, and so the selectmen, let me back to 05, the selectmen asked the school committee and the finance committee to get on board with that um, in, in all the elements. And uh, the finance committee didn't have a problem with it. We, we voted to, I think we had to do two votes, but we, we voted to support. The school committee, on the other hand, they, they moved, uh, we support the plan and concept. And uh, Selectman said that's not good enough. So uh, it, it took the, select, the school committee about three votes, but they finally got everybody on board. So that's the pattern that we followed with each of our overrides, and I think the debt exclusions also. Same thing happened in 05, that uh, the, uh, um, the three bodies supported the override, uh, and I think, amazingly enough, it passed at that point, because a lot of us didn't think it was going to. Um, and the override is led by a member of the selectmen, a member of the school committee, and a member of the finance committee. So that's what we're voting here. Do we support the selectmen's plan for the override? Because that's what's going to be on the ballot. And just to follow up on that, when you say, do we support the select board's plan for the override, do you mean, are we voting to support the commitments associated with the override vote? Or are we voting basically each of our decisions about how we're going to vote on the override once it once it gets on the ballot? Each, each every, everybody here, uh, everybody here gets to vote however they want when the election comes about. What we're voting here is does the finance committee support the override? I, and concurrent with that is the selectman's plan. It includes the 600, the 200, the 50, and the uh, money into the override stabilization fund. You still look confused. It's not confusion, it's, it's more Perhaps I'm following up on what Alan was thinking at the, the, during our last discussion, which is I, I'm just not sure why we're taking this vote at all, and what what that vote will indicate, um, other than a number of people on the finance committee support it and will vote for it, and a number of committee people on the committee will not support it and vote against it. And what, what's the purpose of that vote? The selectmen asked for our, our support. And that is the way we followed for the last uh, two, debt two overrides and I think the debt exclusions at the same time. Uh, the the uh, town has worked well over the last 15 years because the, the groups, the main bodies, the finance committee, the selectmen, and the uh, school committee, uh, along with town management, have worked together um, on this. Um, selectmen take the lead. Uh, they're the ones, they're the elected officials, uh, prime policy makers. They feel this is necessary. They've asked the selectmen, the finance committee, for our support. That's what this is about. The town meeting doesn't vote to support or not support the override. It's not their decision. They appropriate the money. It's the select board's decision as to whether to put it on the ballot. Right. Yep. And, and that's it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it. Technically, is it, the finance committee has no role in that either. It's just we're being asked for to provide support. Yes. OK, uh, Bill. The yeah, um, thing that struck me all along is that Ever since Dan Dunn got up, the first thing that he said, as I recall, was one, this is a very political issue, and number two, it's probably going to be uh, very, <coughs> very two sided. In other words, there's going to be uh, uh, some contention in this. And well, we're discussing this, it feels to me like we're getting pulled into a political discussion rather than a financial one. And and I think the select board is maybe looking at this committee to sort of um, 
give credence to their position that this should go through as a political body rather than really looking at the, looking at it from a financial standpoint. And I just I think we're out of our league on this. And for that reason, and I agreed with Charlie and Alan uh, last time that it's not really our uh, perusal to to be doing this. I, I don't really understand why we're doing this because eventually it's going to go before. <coughs> Uh, before town meeting and this will be a vote, do we want people to look at the uh, finance committee as, well, let's do this because they said this? Uh, it, it's just not, it's more of a political issue to me than crunching numbers and looking at the finances. Does that make sense? Well, it, 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 you're right. It is a political issue. The ballot question on the, the question will be on the ballot, and uh, you know I think a town meeting and maybe the people will be looking to see what's the finance committee's position on it. That's what this is about. Is it political to a certain degree? Yeah, but what's politics? It, it's the uh, definition was, you know, uh, the decision on who gets what, when, and where. That's that's what we decide every day. So this is just an extension of that decision. Um, it's it's a position to raise more money for these objects, spend more here, here, and here, and put the over, put another override off for another year. Okay, I'm trying to get more people who haven't spoken up. Brian? Um, just very quickly on the subject that you're talking about. That this is what this committee is exactly for. This is the point. Yeah. This is our job. Regardless of where you, where you go on, yes or no, that's our job. Okay, Charlie and then Alan. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a, a, a couple comments. Uh, first, going back to John Ellis. Uh, John, you mentioned that um, you know the vote is <coughs> having a $300 a year increase in taxes now versus a $900 a year if we waited for three years. But I would point out to you that the program that the selectmen have proposed means that we're going to have an $1,100 increase one year later. In other words, that deficit, is, instead of being $900 a year in 2000, uh, let me say 23, in 2024, it's going to be $1,200 a year or $1,150 a year with the override. So I, I just want to hark back to my statement that they're, they're asking us to, to, to support uh, an increase in the structural deficit when it's, when it's fundamentally not required at this time. And I want to, would like to point out that this is certainly different than 2005. And I, I think it was different than 2011, but I was directly involved as co-chairman on the 2005 override. We were facing a cliff. We were, or if, if we didn't have the override, we were going to have to cut services. And we, we, we developed a five-year plan, and the idea was to create the fiscal stabilization fund, put some stability in the town budgets, and move forward. The I think the same condition existed in 2011. And due to the uh, <coughs> benefits that we received from the GIC move, that actually lasted more than the original three years. But today, we're not facing a fiscal cliff. The fiscal cliff is three years away. The selectmen are asking to spend this money now for some, some reason, and then they're going to spend more money so we have a bigger fiscal cliff four years away. That's wrong. That's fundamentally insane, from my view. Okay, Alan? Well, I think going back to the, uh, John W's question, uh, the specifics, I think what we're voting on is can the campaign in favor of the override say that this is supported by the Finance Committee? Because it's not a vote in town meeting. It's not a, it's not a binding vote at all. It's part of it. And I want to actually differ with what uh, Brian was saying. I, to me, whether we increase the tax base to, to increase services, as in the sweeteners, preserve services instead of making cuts and whatever, are more policy decisions. Yeah. And, and, um, and we're not a policy body. I, when people ask me, what's the Finance Committee do? My answer is, we count the beans before they're hatched. And what, what it means is I think we're handed a pot of money. And we, we make some guesses. We're handed a pot of money. And we're handed a lot of recommendations from the schools and the town manager and other departments. And we sort of 
make sure the numbers add up and we keep everybody <laughs> honest and we make sure it's open and transparent so everybody knows where the stuff goes. But in terms of should we be spending more money on the schools or should we be spending more money on uh, paving the roads, I don't think that's the role of the finance committee. My, my opinion is that's not the role of the finance committee. I agree. It's, we should make right. sure that the finances are well managed, that it's an open and transparent process. We do what the experts say, but not say, no, we should be spending more money in providing worse services, or we're spending too much money and we should be cutting services. I don't think that's our job. I, I just look at it as uh, it's raising revenue. That's, that's and it, how it hits, if anything hits the tax rate, in my mind, it, it, it's, again, it's just is, is, is our, is it, Do you think it's our role to say we should be spending a higher proportion of taxpayers' dollars no, on the schools? No, 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 no. I think when it's given to us, I think we are, I think we should give an opinion on it. But in general, I, you're, you're getting far more okay. into it. I'm just saying, if something affects the tax rate, in, in my mind, either side of it, I think we are obligated to, it, especially if we are asked. Well, I, I guess I would ask, say, if, if someone says, if we do not have an override, we, will we have to cut services? Then I think it's a fair thing to say, yes, we'll have to cut some services, or vice versa. But in terms of should we cut services, I don't think that's that's our job. I, so I, 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 so, so I, 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 this is why two weeks ago I sort of said, I'd prefer we didn't take a position, because I think it's a political decision, it's a policy decision that the Finance Committee shouldn't make, and I don't think we should, I don't think, just like we, we don't, um, if you want to move we don't participate. Okay, we don't participate in elections. If you want to move we don't, right we now, don't favor. Okay. We don't favor one select board candidate after, over another. Okay. I'm not sure we should take a position which is more discretionary and more policy than it is financial. Which is why I, I you know, said a few weeks ago we shouldn't think of it. Okay. Christine, I disagree with that. One. Uh, we are a policy making body in terms of. That's what that's what we do. We don't simply we don't we don't simply count the numbers and make sure the math is right because we don't need all 21 of us to do that. We're we're here representing every precinct of the town to 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 watch over our finances. And the, the town meeting and the citizens are going to look to us. I know people have come <coughs> to me and said, "How? Where does the finance committee stand on this?" Because I'm not voting unless I know what the finance committee thinks about this. And I, I the issue for me is if it's not a question of if, if this override, are we, are we saying to people, um, or will, will it be said to people, if this doesn't pass, are you willing to have your services cut? Because as Charlie points out, putting aside the, these extras, if we don't need an override right now, Services will continue at the, to the extent that, that, in the manner we promised, in the manner that everyone agreed based on the, the last override. So I, I feel like it's this, I'm very uncomfortable with this, um, this press to have this override now. And for the reasons Charlie points out, to add more spending now. Um, and, and John, to your point, I, I wish that we could get the schools more money, but the schools agreed that they would that they would keep within this spending agreement that we had, and in fact we've actually increased that. This committee has agreed as policy that we should we should, we should make make a path so we can give more money to the school. How the school spends it, we can't control. But I feel like we've made an agreement. As Alan was talking about, we have kept to that agreement and done even better than anyone expected. And um, it, I think it is our role to weigh in and say, yes, we should have an override now, or no, we shouldn't have an override now, or yes, it should be an override, but it should be under these conditions or, or, or not. And I, I feel like, as I said last time, I think we're abdicating our, our position if we do not take a, a, a position. Dean? All right, so for purposes of the question of whether it's a finance committee matter, um, I'm going to read Massachusetts General Law Chapter 39, Section 16, which creates the Finance Committee. And it says, every town whose valuation for the purpose of apportioning the state tax exceeds $1 million, so I think we're above that, shall, in any other town may, by bylaw, provide for the election or the appointment and the duties of apportionment, 
yeah. operation, advisory, or finance committees, and here's what we do, who shall consider any or all municipal questions for the purpose of making reports or recommendations to the town, and such bylaws may provide that committee so be appointed, blah, 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 blah. So the, the mere fact that we have to make a report um, on this um, override, whether it passes or fails, or you know, the, whether it's the revenue or spending means by bylaw we have to make it, we really should be making an opinion. So, with that being aside, so here's my general thoughts on this. Um, I actually think this is um, kind of, not kind of, but I actually think it's actually an honest, I'm happy the select board is doing this. I'm happy they're putting it on the ballot. Um, one thing I look back on, so when I look back to, um, one thing I don't like in government is deceitful campaigning, mm -hmm. right? And I, I'm, I'm I, and I, I tell them personally, I think the most, dis most dishonest thing that the select board did was in 2014, they, um, they were championing the Community Preservation Act. And I great footage of the campaign chair to pass that. The question was asked, well, you know, what, what, what about this school enrollment problem? And uh, what about this overcrowding at the Odyssey? I'll never forget the uh, chair of the ballot question accused Charlie and I of um, fear mongering. We were fear mongering that there was a school enrollment crisis, that there was busting out at the Odyssey, and Thompson was overrun. This is all just miraculous lies. And I said, really? Okay, miraculous lies. Um, so, so of course, when, when things don't, see, when, when you pass the questions, you forget about that stuff, right? You forget that these things happened. But that was the reality. The reality is we knew all that was coming, and everyone said, no, no, no that's not happening. Kids passed us. And a bunch of kids suffered at the Thompson for really what was negligence on the part of the select board. It was just negligent, by the way. In this case, what I am happy they're doing is they're just putting their cards on the table. This is what we want to do, right? Because they had a way out. And, and their way out was actually quite simple. When we convened, when we adjourned town meeting last year, we provided the town meeting with a report. And it said in fiscal 2022, we would have an operating deficit of $14 million. Then we showed up, got the town manager's book seven months later, and through conservative revenue projecting, holding the line on expenses, we erased the 2020, we, we lowered that 2022 deficit from 14 million to 4.8 million. That's in our budget funds. And then we got a windfall from the state, $2 million that we weren't expecting, and that just wiped it out, right? So that pushed the deficit one year over. Now, why I say it's dishonest, they could have been dishonest, <coughs> is when that $2 million came in, it's like we could have really pushed and did what we did many years before, which is say, well, 50% of it goes to the school budget of the $2 million, 50% of it goes into stabilization fund, we'll keep the deficit at um, $4.8 million for 22, and we're moving on, right? Maybe we'll increase it a smidge, but we're moving on. They could have, we, we could have taken that path. We still would have the same um, deficit. And what we would have done is we would have passed up high school debt exclusion this year, closed our eyes, and said, don't worry about the operating override. Right? Don't, don't ignore that. It's, it's the kids in the Thompson who can't, you know, who have like 100 zillion kids ever. Don't worry about it. But they didn't do that. They actually, for once, I think, threw their cards on the table. The select board is saying, look, this is what we want. This is our vision for the town of Arlington, and this is how we're presenting. And if I had to have a crystal ball, I think the high school will go sailing through. They get a lot of popular support, breaks, and things like that. I think the override is going to be a dogfight. Like, I think people are going to vote against it. I think it's going to have not get a lot of popular support. But I'm happy they're doing that. I'm happy they're putting it out there and saying, this is what we want to do. Because it's honest, it's transparent. And if people like it, they can vote for it. <coughs> and if people don't like it, they can vote against it. And if they vote against it, it's a much more dangerous position for the select board. Because now, they have to come back a year later. Not only do they not get the additional spending that they want, they've got to come back a year later with a much less aggressive budget. Like, gone are the 3.5% town side increases. Gone are the large school side increases. I mean, it'd be really tough a year later to say, no, no, no. Taxpayers really want that level of spending. They just didn't vote for it. Really? And so I think, for once, they are being transparent. 
they're being honest and they're saying yes these are our issues this is what we want we're putting it out there for you if you want it vote for it if you don't want it don't for it for it but this is it so in a way in a lot of ways i'm happy that they're going this approach versus the other approach which would be one this year one next year see what happens along the way okay uh any so on what level i agree i don't think we're a policy making board and it is perfectly reasonable for us not to take a position you know we are not elected we're appointed and we are insulated from the choices of the voters and i think that the decision about whether or not to increase the structural deficit in order to receive services they may want is entirely up to the voters who will have to pay the taxes and it's not up to us to say no 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 don't do that but if we are going to take a position on it then i think the position we have to take has to be based on our, our honest personal assessments of what this is going to be for the town going forward fiscally and for the services that the town provides I am of a philosophy that says that there are two ways to deal with a deficit. You can cut spending or you can increase your revenue. And we cannot cut our way to getting rid of the structural deficit. We've all done the math on that. We know exactly what we would have to cut. It's 50% of everything we are doing would have to go. So we have to continue to vote in order to increase our revenue to make up for the deficit no way to squeeze this down into we never increase anything by two and a half percent ever we can't fully fund our pension we can't pay for health care we can't pay special education costs so on and so forth if we do that other communities are simply not in our position again I love prop two and a half because it focuses the mind but it makes no exception for <coughs> communities like ours where we cannot solve our problems with a split commercial rate or a, 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 a vast new growth increase. You know, I'm very familiar with politics in Waltham because it's where my husband's family is from and they have never had a cut, they've never had an override and they never will. They have vast tracts of undeveloped land and huge developments going in and growing all the time. Cambridge, same position. Proposition two and a half happened to be passed when Kendall Square was a desert, and it's not a desert anymore. And all of that has added new growth, and all of that has meant that they don't have to cut their budget, and they don't have to make the choices that they make. So we have to go about making our choices differently, and the one thing that we have that allows us to make a choice that says there are services that the children in our schools need, or that our seniors need, or services that we need in the way of park maintenance, or water and sewer or road improvements or anything else that we want is to vote to increase our revenue beyond the proposition two and a half percent limits i have a hard time keeping my head in the frame of how the taxes are structured in massachusetts i happen to know that in my sister's hometown in lansdowne pennsylvania she pays the same amount of taxes i do on a house that is worth one third what my house is worth and her trash is picked up twice a week and she doesn't have to put her cans at the end of her driveway the guys who pick up the trash walk up the driveway into her garage to take them out and return them there at the end in the town that i grew up in if you could find a house that was worth what my house is worth you would pay two and a half times the property taxes that i'm paying here our taxes are arbitrarily low our housing costs are high. And our housing costs are high because of our good fortune. So I think that the town can uh, bear the increase. I certainly think we should offer the option to people who may believe that these services need to be added. And I think we should support that because it's our job to distribute <coughs> the funds and, and to call out problems and discrepancies in the budget that make it impossible to balance it to question additions it's not our job to tell the people of Arlington that they shouldn't want to increase their taxes so I'm a yes if we're taking a vote and if we don't take a vote I will not feel like we have failed in our responsibility 
Okay, is there anybody who has not spoken that would like to put their two cents in? Okay, a uh, couple, of, couple of points. Uh, I think we are a policy-making board in many ways. The reserve fund is where it is because we accepted Charlie's recommendation on putting it there. The snow and ice budget is where it is because Christine uh, pushed and we, we made it so it was uh, a, a reasonable number. The arts and culture is where it is because we put it together and put it out there. Um, you know, so we do, we do make, every time we vote, we make, a, we make a decision on policies. Now on the override, um, I, I've gone back and forth. Sometimes in the same conversation, I've gone back and forth on, on this issue. Um, I probably agree with what 80 to 90 percent of what Charlie says um, uh, on this. But I think for several reasons, I'd like to recommend that you support the selectmen and the override. Uh, since I mentioned before, since 2005, all the overrides and the debt exclusions have been uh, the result of cooperation between the three main policy-making boards of this, uh, of, of this town. And we've been working together with the selectmen and the school committee. Uh, they, we, we work together on the long-range planning committee uh, to come to solutions. Uh, the Board of Selectmen are going out on a limb, and I think we, we need to support them. Uh, the schools have been pushing for more money. Why? Because they're getting 200 new students a year. It's, it's just almost ridiculous, the amount of uh, the, the, the students we've had. But, you know, they've pushed to a point, and then they've backed off and, and basically accepted uh, what the Long-Term Planning Committee and the Finance Committee have done. And they have a very sympathetic town meeting uh, on that. Uh, it's, it's a very different town meeting than it was 15 or 20 years ago. Um, I can remember one sample of uh, probably seven or eight years ago when somebody got up and made a motion to increase the school budget by $300,000. And Kathy Bodie, the superintendent, got up and s thanked them and, and said, we you know, appreciate the support but we are satisfied with the recommendation of the Finance Committee and we ask that you support it. Now that's, <laughs> I dare you to find another superintendent in the state or school committee that, that would do that. And, uh, you know, they, they, could have, uh, they could have pushed harder, but I think they, in a lot of ways they were team players. They, they went along with the cooperation. Um, and if this loses, the override loses, schools are going to, keep pushing for more money and I think there's sympathy uh, from a lot of scores to give them more money. The only difference is we're not going to have that much money to give them. We're going to have to spend more money than we really want. At least with the override there's a revenue source um, to go that way. So I, I guess with that in, uh, in maintaining the cooperation which has done so well for us over the last 15 years uh, I would ask that you support the override and the uh, and the select board. So, with that, if anybody else has anything else they want to say, I think we need to take a vote. Daryl, um, I'm going to say something and ask a question. I sure. was a political science major in college. One of the things you learn in political science 101 is that a budget is absolutely a reflection of you know, the political entity's priorities. So, every time we vote on an agency budget, we we are getting involved in politics, <coughs> and we aren't just adding up numbers. Um, but I, I want to understand, particularly from Charlie, um, I want to make sure I heard you correctly about what happens in terms of future overrides if this does pass and what happens if it doesn't pass. <coughs> As I understand it, um, I think that the two dates now are 23 and 24. Yeah, if, yeah. if there is no override, if there is no override, we have a deficit. We have a deficit in, in fiscal year 2023. That's okay. correct. If we vote the override, and, and that deficit is $14 million. If we vote the override, we have a deficit in fiscal year 24, 2024, and the deficit is $17 million. So, and the, so the argument, 
though, that I was commenting on is that voting now doesn't materially change the demand on override workers in the future. It doesn't change the sticker shock that the taxpayers are going to face. The only thing that we're doing right now under the proposal that the selectmen put forward, and, and I think you know all of the, the, the favorable things that Al said about the past and the selectmen is, are, are true, but I also think we have to we have an, an obligation to think through whether or not their proposal is reasonable. And my view is it's not reasonable. So I think if we hold off the fiscal year 23, we may actually find out, you know, maybe the state's going to vote more money and, and we, then we go another year or two. The, the thing is, we just don't have to do it now. That's my question. Okay. Are there any other questions or does anybody want to add two cents that hasn't been added before? Jonathan? Uh, Charlie, but wouldn't it also be fair to say that if the override passes and the state comes up with more money, then the commitment can be on the override vote can be extended as it has been in the past for other reasons? Sure. No, it, the, in other words, the, the, the 2014 date would move like maybe a year or two. 24. 24. 24. I'm sorry, 2024. Right. Yeah. Okay, um, so so the uh, decision is: Does the finance committee support the override uh, and the uh, uh, position of the board of selectmen in putting it out there? Okay, I have a feeling this is not going to be unanimous. Uh, so, all those in favor of supporting of the override, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All those opposed? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, it's not exactly a <laughs> wild unanimous, but uh, the vote is eight to seven to support. Uh, is there any other business before the committee? So tonight, uh, Charlie. Did, did we vote on the... Uh two budget articles, or do we have to vote on the two budget articles, the, 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 the 250000 and the 600000 Well, I think the, uh, um, I, I think the vote in support of the override, I would take at least, if somebody wants to re-vote it, as, a, as approval of the 600, the 200, and the 50. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, just, yeah. I just didn't vote if we, yeah, vote include the position of the select, but I think the commitment the commitment okay uh, now uh, we're hoping uh, I got to rewrite my chair's report a little bit um, and uh, every, everybody should have gotten to Alan uh, on the budgets so tomorrow uh, mid-morning or late morning Alan's going to put all the things together uh, and go to print so the finance committee report should be available electronically uh, late tomorrow uh, and then it'll, the hard copies will be printed out uh, and available the first night so uh, you know wait till Friday you can probably go online and get the FinCom report if you want to is there any other business before the committee okay meeting adjourned mm -hmm.